Hey guys, welcome back. Besiege Early Access coverage. This is episode 21, I'm an Igneous, and today it's a three-speed transmission. Now this is very different from the other transmissions that I've done. And there's a link in the information box below the video to a Reddit post from the guy who originally posted this design. I think in terms of the version that you're looking at right now, it's pretty much a block-for-block -block duplicate of his. So credit where it's due. Uh, I didn't come up with this, but we're going to expand on it a little bit before the end of the episode. And then there's also going to be a link to a download in the information box that's going to have the enhanced version that we're going to be showing you at the end, just so that you can mess around with it. Because to build one of these, as you're going to see momentarily, is very, very simple and straightforward. But first, I'm going to give you just a little bit of a demonstration of how this works. You can see we've got this large wheel on the end, and it's connected to this unpowered cog, which is connected to a swivel, which has another unpowered cog on the end, and these two gears going around, the planetary gears I think is what they would be called, uh, are also unpowered cogs that are basically just interacting with this one and this one based on how they are turning. In this case this one obviously isn't turning but this one is. So this one's set to automatic at the default speed of 1.00 and then we've got another powered cog over here that's also set to the default speed of 1.00 but it's set to keybind, so you can see it's not moving now. If we This one's moving clockwise from this angle that we're looking at. If we move this one counterclockwise with the keybind, you can see we go into a slow reverse kind of speed. Now, the unpowered cogs, the planetary gears, are interacting with the ones on the end, and this one happens to be turning, so it influences the overall speed and direction of these guys along with this one. Now, if we let go, we release the key binding. It goes back to not moving here and moving here. So these are kind of moving at half the speed of the wheel or roughly, I think is what it would be. And then you press the key binding to make this one go clockwise. It's now matching the direction of this one. And these guys are moving even faster because now they've got two fast moving cogs that they're playing off of and rotating around three different speeds, reverse, low first and high second really slick I really I really really like it. Now I've got balance blocks on the end of these cogs just as kind of placeholders um, to illustrate the importance of these two cogs here because these are the ones that you would connect to to take power from the transmission to the wheels and actually have it adjust the speeds to reflect what was happening with the trans the transmission that'll be a little bit more clear when we get to the slightly more advanced version but for now just understand that these two cogs that are moving around in a circle are very important but before we get to the enhanced version, let's let's take a look at exactly how to build one of these because this block for block is very, very easy, but you have to understand that things have to face a certain direction and the easiest way to do that is to show you. So I built this little frame just to save a little bit of time so that it has something to sit on. And then I built this post like this and a post like this, five blocks in between, five blocks in between. So the first thing we want to place is our large wheel. And you can see we're going to set it to automatic, and that's the only thing that we're going to change. We're not worried about the key binding because we're not really touching them, and we're not changing the speed. Although this is something, this is one of the things that you can mess around with if you wanted the transmission to produce different speeds, uh, especially if you're using the large wheel as your power source. So then from here, this is where it gets uh, tricky, but not in the hard to understand way, just in that you just have to know how to put it together way. We put a couple of blocks in here, double wood block works. And then once you've connected something to the other end, you take them out. So now I've got something here. I can take a swivel and I can connect it to this piece here. Now I can remove that and I've got a, a swivel basically sitting out in the middle of nowhere. It's not going to stay that way for long. We're going to take an unpowered medium cog. And we're going to connect it to the end of the swivel, just like that. So now the spindle of the cog is in the swivel, but the little nub on the end connects to this wheel. So there's a connection on both sides. But just for the orientation of the cog, it's very important that the swivel be holding the, the spindle for the cog and not the, the wheel. Now we do the same thing here with another unpowered medium cog with the spindle going into the swivel. And then we do another one here and another one here. So basically what we've done is we used a wooden block as a spacer and then another one here so that we could attach the swivel to the block that was here removed the temporary blocks and then attached unpowered medium cogs all the way around the swivel leaving this one and the one underneath untouched now we take a powered medium cog and we connect it here 
And then just like the connection here, it's the same thing. There's a little nub on the end of this cog that's going to connect to the powered cog. And now it's all one unit. And then we want to take and we want to change the parameters here. Just key bindings, whatever is comfortable for you. I use one and two. We don't want to set it to automatic. And again, the rotation speed here, even more so than the large wheel, is one that you can play around with to get different speeds out of your transmission. This one allows you to adjust the speed of your reverse, your first and your second sort of independently without just changing the whole speed of the, the transmission, which is what this would basically do. So now you've got, oh, just to make it identical, with a ball ballast block here and a ballast block there. And now with the exception of the braces that we aren't going to worry about, you can see when we start it, just so that there's no trickery or tomfoolery, unpowered, or sorry, the powered medium cog now is going counterclockwise. We get the slow reverse let go it stops we get the slow forward turn it the same direction as the large wheel we get a faster forward that's it really really simple right it's like seven or eight blocks to build something like this very uh, slick very elegant kind of setup but it doesn't do any good if we can't get the power from the transmission to something that needs to turn like a wheel or a weaponized arm or something so that's what we're going to uh, take a look at now with a slightly enhanced version. Now this here would be an example of how we would transmit the power from the transmission, these two planetary gears here, to something else so that we can use it to turn wheels, to swing mechanized arms, whatever you want. It's not necessarily the best example. There's a couple of kinks that I would work out when I had it in a permanent placement, but just for demonstration purposes, this will work pretty well. Just so that we have a frame of reference, uh, what we're doing here relative to the past example, if you take and put a wooden post up here and change this ballast block for a wooden post, from that post to here is identical to what we looked at and what we just built, except instead of ballast blocks on these cogs, we've got swivels and those swivels are connected to this wheel by braces. That's it. Very important if you want to connect to these cogs, you have to do it with swivels because if you lock up these cogs by putting something stationary on them, the whole machine stops working. So you see the swivel and then if you wanted to do like a wooden brace connection, it would be very heavy, but you could do that in the, in the instead of the metal braces. I just like the metal braces, so that's why I use them. But what we're really looking at here is the mechanism for getting power from here over to here in a way that works without having to um, break things passing through. I just broke the brace there we go put it back so now if you imagine this is the intermediary block between this block and this one it's not perfect it, you'll notice when we start moving that it actually spins with various different bits depending on what's going on it should ideally be stationary so that you can get the benefit of the three different speeds out of this gear there's only so much that we could do <laughs> we'll get it sorted in a final application and then with these guys connecting to this wheel and turning it, that's how we're getting the speed out of the transmission to this wheel. And then this wheel is connected to this unpowered cog, which is held onto this post. It's attached to this post. And then it spins this cog up top, which spins this cog on the side. And now we've got the final translated speed to something that we can use over here. What you would need uh, to set up for your particular application depends on what you're doing. In this case, you could have a wheel, like I said, you could have a, an arm that was spinning around flinging things. Or you could have another three-speed transmission giving you up to nine speeds out of this transmission here already because you've got first gear, gears one, two, three, second gear, gears four through six, third gear, gears seven through nine. So it, it's, it's all adding and multiplying and there's it's too early for num numbers above five right now, but take my word for it. <laughs> This is a beneficial setup if you want more control and potentially more speed out of your transmission than just the original three speed. So let's just fire it up and take a look at how it works. So you can see now the yoke is turning and it's connected and it's turning this wheel. And you can also see this would ideally be stationary, this ballast block, so that it's not influencing the speed of this. Because right now we're not getting the, the full proper three speeds out of this, this shenanigan but it's difficult to kind of figure out a system to hold everything in place when it's just set up in a test bed kind of thing. So we'll be doing more things with this kind of transmission and actual practical applications. But for what we're looking at now, you kind of get the idea. And again, we're not doing anything at all. We're not holding any buttons. This 
large wheel is moving. And then we've got this powered cog over here. When we start spinning counterclockwise, we go into the slow reverse and you can see just how slow that reverse is translated over to this side here with this transmission. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty slow. We let go, it's not quite accurate exactly what speed we're getting out of it, but it's not bad. I mean, it's basically assuming that this is neutral, this is kind of what we're getting. And then we can set it spinning clockwise and it breaks because it's too fast. That's fine, it's not a big deal. It's because we could brace things better. That's kind of the thing is you have to make sure everything is braced so that things don't pull apart. But at the end of the day, whatever speed this large wheel is turning is what's being translated through these gears to this side and this transmission. So then if we go, for example, slow reverse, but then we engage the powered cog over here, now it's a faster reverse or it's a slower forward. And then if we let go and we see what we get on this side, it's a much faster reverse or a very slow forward. And then if we go fast on this side, or sorry, on this side, oh, it's gonna pull apart. We're gonna try it, we're gonna do it real quick. Fast, fast reverse, really fast forward, reverse something. It's moving really, really fast. It's not pulling apart yet, but it won't last much longer. And it, oh, it just broke. <laughs> it broke right in here. That was the least spectacular failure I've seen in a long time. So you see the concept demonstrated. We've shown you how to build the very basic unit, the three-speed unit. We've shown you how to transfer the power from that unit to something else. And then we've shown you roughly what happens when you daisy chain these three-speed transmissions to one another. The question is, do you want to make something big enough to have multiple units? Or do we want to focus our efforts on shrinking it down a little bit? I've got one more thing to show you and then, and then we'll be done. So this is just an example. This is uh, a very mild example of what can happen when you just stop for a minute and try and compress things a little bit, not a lot. Used, we used to have spindles or swivels, I should say, on the end of these cogs and then they were connected to braces that were connected to this wheel. Very important, like I said, if you're connecting to these cogs, you have to have the swivel so that the cogs can still move. But if we connect to the swivel in the middle, we still get the same turning speed as we would connecting to these guys out here, but then we don't have to have the swivel and we can make things just a little bit smaller. So instead of something up here connecting down, it's connecting straight across. It's just a little bit of space that we're saving. And you can see it works just the same. It's basically identical. Everything that needs to move is allowed to move. The, th the one thing that I would like to correct in a practical working version, of course, is this ballast block shouldn't be moving. This can move and this can move, but this doesn't have to. And if we can make it stop, that would be fantastic, but that's the trick, I think, is making that stop because it's not going to want to. It's going to want to keep doing what it's doing. And then it's, of course, transferring the power across here. The whole idea would come up with a design when it works is to then either expand on it so it can do more or refine it so that it does the same thing in less space. That's kind of the, the, the goal. So I'm going to be messing around a lot with this. Like I said, there's a download for this specific version here. So if you want to mess around with that one, you can. And then, of course, at the beginning of the video, we showed you how to build the basic version. So you can start with the basics if you want and do whatever you want to it. And I hope you have fun with it. And I hope you can build some cool things. So please leave your comments and feedback. If you want to be notified when I add future videos like this for this game and other games, you can always subscribe to my channel. And you can follow me on social media for notifications. Link for social media always in the information section below the video. Thanks for watching, guys. And take care.